Microplastics in the air may be leading to lung and colon cancers, according to a new study. A world-first review of 3,000 studies suggests that human fertility and lung function may be harmed by tiny plastic particles which pollute the air. Nicholas Chartres is the lead author of the report and a senior research fellow at the University of Sydney, and he joins us now. Thank you so much for your time this Not morning. Uh, so first up, how, where do microplastics come from and how do they make their way into the air and then into us? Sure, so there's two types. There's primary, uh, which are intentionally made to put in things like cosmetics. Um, and then there are secondary, which are the main source where they are degradation products from larger pieces of plastic. So things like plastic water bottles, uh, you know, tires, things that degrade over time. Uh, they get into the environment. Uh, we know they travel pretty much everywhere and they can get into our body, uh, obviously through the air, which is what this study found, but also water and uh, through food. And how much of this stuff is getting into us? It's a good question. Uh, there's been different studies modelling that. There was a study from the University of Newcastle about 18 months ago that said we consume about a credit card uh, worth of plastic or microplastic each week. Uh, other studies have come out saying that was like an overestimate, but we still we know that one of the key properties of microplastics is that they're bioaccumulative. So once they're in our body, uh, we know that it's very difficult for them to get out. So over time, you know, the more we get exposed, uh, the more builds up in our body. So whether we get exposed to a, a certain amount each week uh, isn't necessarily relevant. It's you know over time how much we get exposed to. And there's clearly been a lot of attention paid to this topic. 3,000 yes. studies is a lot. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so what did you look at when you looked at these studies and what did you find? Yeah, good question. So it's certainly an ACN area of research. It's exploded in the last couple of years when um, yeah, some early research came out showing there was potential health effects. Uh, we kept our uh, outcomes narrow. We looked at the digestive system the reproductive system and the respiratory system. And we did that so that we could look across the different health effects within those outcomes and do it in a reasonably timely way. Uh, and we still identified 3,000 studies. We had a mix of human and also animal data, but primarily animal data was used. Uh, and what we found was, you know, we um, saw uh, changes in things like uh, organ length and um, uh, you know, function of the lung, but we also saw biological changes within the lung and also the colon. So these uh, mechanistic changes, uh, which um, are linked to things like cancer. So we saw chronic inflammation quite high in the lung, uh, and we also saw that quite uh, high in the, the colon as well, consistently across all the studies that we identified. Uh, and this has been used now by different agencies around the world uh, to identify predictors of cancer. And as you say, these studies are mainly in animals, yes. I mean, for obvious yep. ethical reasons. Uh, how translatable, are we sure that that translates to human? Yeah, it's an excellent question. It often gets raised. Uh, you've got to remember in this type of research, when we're talking about chemicals or just environmental exposures, we can't ethically randomise people to be exposed to these contaminants. So we rely on animal data. The US EPA uh, and authoritative bodies around the world will regulate chemicals based on animal data for that reason. Uh, if we get human data, it means that we've been exposed for you know a decade before we can actually then you know see these health effects. Uh, and an another important thing to realise is that the Australian government and governments around the world, they, they happily bring chemicals to market with little to no data. And if there is data, it's sometimes just one animal study. So it's sufficient to bring chemicals to market, but when we see a raft of health effects in really good animal data, um, which is what we see in these studies here, there's often you know, that, that concern raised, is it uh, translatable? We did a lot to make sure that these are relevant uh, animal uh, models. We used rodent models, uh, which are the most biologically similar. We looked at uh, air, we looked at water, and we looked at food. So we made sure the exposure pathways were similar to humans. And what we also did was make sure these were chronic studies. So we looked across studies that were looking at multiple doses in the animal so we could see where there was a consistent effect over time. And obviously these health effects are really concerning. Yes. Uh, so what can be done about it? Does limiting exposure mean limiting production of these chemicals? Yeah, and this is important for people to understand. We have uh, around 460 million metric tonnes of plastic being made each year. That's set to triple in the next uh, 20 years, uh, or the next 30 years. We know that the primary proportion of plastic is from single-use plastic, and 98% of that comes from fossil fuels. People need to understand that the fossil fuel industry is going to tr transition away from energy and transport in the next decade, obviously, as we move away from it, and this is going to be the new revenue stream. So we're going to get exposed to more and more plastic, and as I said, this bioaccumulates in our body. So we need to take action now and ban single-use plastics. And Nicholas, just one more question. Yep. Is there anything that we can do on an individual level? Sure, and you get, I get asked this a lot. Yeah, absolutely. Obviously, just removing plastics from your environment at home is critical. Um, that will reduce the exposure. But again, people need to understand the government needs to take action because we know this stuff is in our environment outside of our home. But yeah, remove as much plastic as you can at home. And obviously in food as well. Try not to eat out of packets.
Okay, good advice. Nicholas so Chartres, thank you so much for your time. No